New for 96. With your hosts, Kevin McCauley and Chris Wynn. Do you click as angrily as you type? Angrier. Kevin is an angry typer. It's a stu- he looks like like a, what you would think like a cartoon typing looks like. It's just it's very animated. That's uh, how I type. I was taught that way. You're using it incorrectly. <laughs> this is not Steve Jobs' vision for you. You're supposed to glide across the keys now. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyways. It's gotten me this far. Maybe. Has it? <laughs> uh, hi, Kevin. Hi, Chris. How are you? Pretty good. Well, welcome to another episode of New, New for, for 96. 96. Ooh. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so how was your week? Um, It was good. I didn't buy any cars, and my garage didn't collapse on itself. Oh, that's weird. That happened to me. (laughs) Um, uh, Yeah, apparently that is the start of my week. Actually, it's been my last week. Yeah. Um, Well, tell me about the garage, because you have... You live in Houston. Mm -hmm. You have no... Really, no place to put any cars no. uh, at your house. Yeah. You have it's a, good a thing parking have, space I and have a street. Four cars now. Mm-hmm. 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 And uh, you have you have the street, you've got your parking space, and you've got a storage unit where you keep one car, which you rotate out. And you drive them all pretty regularly. So you have the storage unit, uh, and that one had some issues today. It did have some issues today. I think I sort of frantically called you. Uh, like out of frustration, like I walked, I was, I pulled the, uh, Toyota Celsius, which was like freshly cleaned and gleaming. And I was hoping to put it away and maintain the cleanliness mm-hmm. for a little while. And, uh, as soon as I rolled up the garage door, um, water was, I could see like water streaming from the ceiling uh streaming so how much how much water is that uh a streams worth um 2.3 gallons like it was raining yeah it was dripping it was dripping okay. heavily uh and, and know, it hasn't rained in a long time so this is like air conditioner water or something. yeah that's the thing is that um i when i was driving into the storage facility uh there was like a gutter like right in front of me there was like a gutter that was fallen from the roof uh and i was thinking to myself boy that would really suck if like water was going into that unit right there right then and then sure enough like uh in my head as i was driving to the actual unit in my head i was thinking man that would be really terrible if there was a car in there and there was just water (laughs) dripping on it and like it would just like ruin the paint uh, from perpetual dripping and then like yeah i opened up I opened up my garage door uh, to find water dripping likely from a central AC unit, like drain hose being clogged or something. I don't know. And uh, they don't know, nor do they have any sense of urgency to fix it, apparently. Uh, so anyways, yeah. So the car, the car like wasn't getting dripped on directly. It was getting splashed on from the ground. Uh, so it was wet and I don't know how long it's just been dripping like that. Um, uh, cause I haven't seen that car in a week, probably at least. But I mean, so it's, it's not, it doesn't sound like the worst thing that could befall a car in storage, but it goes against the whole purpose, which the purpose is to have a safe, dry place to keep a right. car outside of the yeah. elements. And it's annoying because I don't know what the water is like, right. what it, you know, so I was freaking out a little bit and I moved it immediately. Um, told alerted them that this is happening much to the like non-surprise or care of the facility worker who just like gently strolled over there with me uh and on the way explained how uh uh, she'll put in a call they'll get to it at some point (laughs) like and i'm you know in my head thinking like you know this for me i would be telling you hey you should get your car out of there. We'll put it in another unit or something or just get it out of there. Um, but basically, her thing was like, you do what you want to do, but mm-hmm. it's going to keep leaking. And 
Um, I'm going to keep walking back to the office uh, without a care in the world. It's fine. Uh, so I got the car out and uh, I called you because I needed help to move it. Uh, and yeah, this... how, how is it that I helped you move like all of these cars? Yeah, and you didn't drive one of them. No, and then I end up taking a lift after dropping off my car for service like 15 <laughs> minutes later. <laughs> well, I didn't have any cars on me mm. at the time, except that's untrue. I actually had at least two of them parked at my office. Yes. Yeah. So one is still there. One is no. still here. One is not there anymore. Oh, our is friend Steven. Steven. Okay. Yeah. Um, let oh, me that's nice. Park it in his uh, apartment garage. It's a nice brand new garage. Uh, it's like a block away. So that was super Isn't handy. That where his infinity got broken into? No, oh. it wasn't. It was at oh, the, the right. coffee shop that I designed. Yeah. <laughs> in actuality. Um, Excellent. Yeah. So that was an adventure. Uh, basically, <laughs> I almost drove all four of my cars today, mm. uh, and we're gonna keep this mystery alive. Although mm. some let's, of you, let's put it into it. Follow me on Twitter. Let's put it into it uh, right now. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, I purchased a, another vehicle last week on accident, um, and on accident I mean uh, on purpose. Uh, it was a car that was mentioned on the podcast previously, um, but I had mentioned that it was sold because the listing was taken down like after a day. Yeah, and... we were going to go look at it on Saturday, and then it, uh, they took it down, and we just figured, oh, these things just, you know fly off the shelves uh, yeah can't keep them in stock it's a new for 2011 bmw, BMW. oh my god are we doing a unison <laughs> thing again it's a 328 it's a 328i wagon? rear wheel drive manual wagon yeah uh the very touring. desirable yeah not the all-wheel drive not, not the all not the x drive uh not the automatic and this and is the lci this is did you just say that you said this. Oh, okay. But it's the LCI. Yeah. Uh, so, Life cycle impulse. Yeah. Yeah. Wrap Most your head around horrible that. horrible marketing speak terminology. I find, I mean, it was almost an impulse purchase <laughs> and my life is cycling. Uh, I don't know what that actually means, but yeah so i bought this car and it's actually something that i've been looking at for a long time i had an e90 a few years ago and uh i loved that car and um but before buying that one i was actually in the market for a wagon i was looking for a an e91 um same configuration that i just bought but i i found one and then i chickened out because it was uh in california and i'd never purchased a car from afar and basically sight unseen before so i bought a local sedan uh and, and you told like you had told me about that one that got away yeah that wagon like multiple times over the past three I years bring you it told up me about it every so, once in a while yeah. yeah so so i knew that like this was one that you were you were gonna get this one or find another one somewhere else but you were definitely going to be back in an E90 or E91 in some form, inevitably. Yeah. Um, uh, which is what happened. Yeah, which is exactly what happened. So uh, I saw a listing, um, I think. Uh, I saw it on cars.com. Um, and normally I'm like on BRZO, the Craigslist searching app specifically designed for looking up cars um, brco is not a sponsor yet <laughs> yet um and as i do that every morning uh and as i like to remind kevin if you're receiving something from me between the hours of 8 30 and 9 it's not likely from a regular seat but rather <laughs> a toilet so i don't recall how i found this one on the toilet but hmm. uh anyways yeah, so I found this car, and at first, I kind of wasn't into it. You know, I saw it, I was like, oh my god, like, low miles. How many miles? It has 71,000. Okay. Which is low for a 2011, mm -hmm. and um, honestly, like, for the average available uh, manual wagon that is available now, they're, like, all kind of reaching 100,000 miles at this point, uh -huh. uh, if not are well over. Uh, like, do you remember that one that I almost bought in 
uh, New Mexico. That one was at ninety thousand, I think. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and I think what was were... that one priced at? Was it gray? It was black. Oh, we talked about this because uh, <laughs> I I don't want to own black cars, but every car that I find that I want like happens to be black, uh, and it's really annoying because maintaining a black car is absolutely uh, life ruinous. It's almost so, as if the rich people that buy all these cars to begin with new are extremely basic, and then the true enthusiasts that buy them secondhand must deal with the consequences. Yes, basically. And I don't understand like the double or triple black um, <laughs> draw, which uh, I think uh, many people are prefer. I remember there's a guy that is like local to Houston in the PCA. It's like, oh no, only car for me. Triple back, triple black turbo cab. Mm-hmm. Need mm-hmm. my 911 mm-hmm. triple black mm-hmm. turbo cab. I'm I'm more of a triple black turbo cab man myself. Yes, of course. That's what he says. That's how he introduces himself. Oh God. Yeah. 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 Did you so pretend to die right black, there? Black roof. Mm-hmm. Black interior. Yes. Black paint. Yep. Probably black wheels. Probably a limo tint. Black badges. Yep. Treatment. Yep. Black uh, taillight covers. Yep. And you don't want people to see your headlight covers and when people can see your braking, yeah, that means they're getting it's, too close. It's a little, you know, that's something you want to keep personal. They might, yeah, they might follow you. Yeah, it's about privacy so, here. Just, we live in Texas, which is I'll the state of stop when I want not, to. It's none of your business. Please do not tread on me. Yeah, what they say. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, I actually don't have tint on any of my black cars, which would be the Celsius and the the Cayman, uh, because it it's just like it's too much like mm-hmm. you, i like first of all i like being able to see through a car anyways and it depends on the car uh but i think cars look better generally without tint new or old um the wagon has tint uh and i actually thought about taking it off of that because i actually kind of like how wagons look um without tint especially because you've got the light interior yeah which really looks good with the green like when we when we looked at the car i went with you we went up to uh the bmw dealer yeah and they got the car out and ready for us. Uh, it was early evening, afternoon, and they, you know, like they pulled up and all the windows were down. I think, or he turned the key and rolled down all the windows. And you know, seeing this like green exterior with the tan interior, it was just like that classic combo yeah, that looked so really good when you could the see the car. From the we should explain is Tasman green, uh, which is um, it's more gray than it is green. Yeah, it's like a drabby gray green. It's lighter too. It's not like a deep. Yeah. Uh, like the adventuring. In, yeah. It's, uh, it's adventure it's time. Lighter. Yeah. <laughs> um, I and I love the green on the nine nine three. Um, yeah. and so this that's green what is, I kind of thought this was from the pictures. I, I thought think so they too. Just sort of it was sat, just, they just saturated them. Or it was something. really. I think it was like really flat, bright light, and so it just made it look very green. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that when I looked at it, I actually I would I passed like mentally passed on it because um, I I just didn't like I didn't like tan interiors and uh, especially you know, I don't know I just uh, I just I'm not a big tan interior fan uh, for myself because I wear denim all the time and it just it's harder to keep uh, clean and newer looking um and yeah green like i wasn't in the market for a green bmw newer bmw and honestly i'd never paid attention to tasman green before but they're everywhere uh well i don't know about everywhere but you see them around like x3s yeah x1s. <laughs> x yeah all the x cars um anyway so i love this car like it is the perfect car it's like the perfect car for me for right now is this- like the daily driver that you were trying to buy before. Yes. So have this, you been driving it all? Did you drive it all last week? I did much? not. I. Why is that? I. <laughs> uh, it's hard to say. Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, I've been dealing like I've been trying to prep two cars for sale. Um, and the GTI and the Cayman. Uh, although really more just the GTI at this point. So I dropped out the GTI uh, to have some things done to it uh, last Monday. Um, and then we went and took a look at this car, and I was not planning on buying a car last week. Um, yeah, I, we, I went on the test drive, and then I just left you alone, and I just 
You did. Um, ha- ha- I hate admired all the new cars in the show. Yeah, and I know. Took snarky pictures. And I stuff. just like. And then I came. I, I saw you were alone at the desk with the salesman. He was up making copies or something, and uh, and then I was talking to you. Yeah, I wanted popped, to keep it a he surprise. Popped back, he popped in. It was like, yeah. okay, well, we'll have that title ready for you or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, he ruined the surprise. What surprise? You were Even though, to the actually, I told that. you, I actually told you early on that if there's a car like if it's within arm's reach and it's almost everything that I want, I I like I it's more likely than not. Because it's here right now yeah. in front of me. Well, that's why I'll you haven't. It. That's why you haven't bought an air cooled is because there hasn't been the yeah. right one no. here. I, I think there's been a few right potential right ones. Fly away. Yeah. Fly away potential right ones. Yeah. It's just I think you're not ready to take that plunge. There have been some really good examples, like, but they're yeah they're far away, and then just like the thought of, I mean, it's fine. I've I've purchased. Um, a car from yeah, but a there's distance. a lot more uncertainty. On there a is a four-year-old car, yeah, than definitely, and a four-year-old car, yeah, four-year-old car, and um, I don't know why. Like, I I should just do what you did and <laughs> blindly place a bid on eBay, hoping you wouldn't win it, and yeah. then you win it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, but I have to like hand ring. I have to like arrange for a PPI, and you know basically background check uh the owner by way of like searching their email or screen no. names on various forums to oh, yeah, find are out gonna, are we gonna touch on that <laughs> no we will not be touching on that because i did that with this car only but after the purchase yeah. um anyways the previous owner may or may not have been someone who we probably would not have been friends with yeah <laughs> to say probably. the least yeah probably um but anyways but yeah. doesn't it make you happy in that case, knowing that you were driving his car and yeah. that probably would really upset him? Yeah. We should say that basically I like some, I just Google searched like the guy's name. Oh, by the way, the car came with like a full set of service records, which was the other plus. I was planning on buying it anyways, but like this is the dream uh, when buying like a, a used car and, and I found this sticker too, uh, the original sticker nestled uh, in the manual. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So <laughs> it... Basically, it comes with every single thing that you'd ever want. What was the original want. sticker price? Uh, 38000 So, that? not that bad, actually. Uh, and this one wasn't really spec'd out. Like, this is right. a, it's a base model with uh, the mid-range wheel. So, it's a 17-inch wheel. And I should say, like, I actually kind of like it. Mm-hmm. Um, not just from a look standpoint, but, like, from a ride quality standpoint, because the roads are so rough around here. Like, that compared to the 18-inch wheels on my old E90, like, this thing rides like a dream. Yeah, um, it also doesn't have the sport suspension, which makes yeah. it yeah. a little more compliant over our garbage yeah. roads. Yeah, so it it's firm and it's firm and controlled, but it also just absorbs the bumps like really well, better than the Celsius. Um, the Celsius like thuds around like surprisingly, <laughs> even though it's it has air suspension, uh, it is surprisingly not that comfortable. Yeah. Uh, or it's comfortable, but it it's a little bit crashier than I thought it was going to be. Um, but yeah, so I love this car, uh, and uh, it's one of four hundred and seventy three ever produced um, yeah. E ninety ones rear wheel drive manual E ninety ones, which is crazy to think about. Like that, yeah. All the tens of thousands that they made, like mm. that little sliver was properly spec'd out and all the rest are trash. <laughs> uh, but I was getting really close to either buying an X-Drive manual or just getting an automatic even. Um, and I'm glad that I held out and or got distracted by other things. Like, cause at the same time <laughs> I was looking, I, I constantly share cars with you anyways, that mm-hmm. things that are like in my very short orbit of attention. And then, I forget, or I find another car, and then it yeah. Well, that day you had sent me like a cheap, like a very cheap nine nine six that looked good. I mean, we're talking in the teens, probably Mm -hmm. the same price, roughly. Like it was a nine nine six. It was silver. It looked good. I think it was the facelift. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, it had IMS done, and you were like, should I like what if I just got this and just just as like a fun car, and I kept looking for an air cool. Just got this just to like. Have fun. And I was, and I told you, like, you're still gonna want an E90. You're still gonna want an E91. Like, you're gonna want that car. 
and that's not going to go away. And then I think even with this 996, which is not a lot to put in, and you yeah. know about the maintenance of these cars, but like once you have to start doing it, I think yeah. you get really. It'll I know really dis- that's just it. Like that's what was wrong with. Like that's why I didn't like the GTI, uh, and I think we discussed this before, but uh, it's still a German car that has German car like quirks, and they're not. It's not inexpensive to fix these things, yeah. and honestly, I'd. Ra- I would rather put that same amount of effort into upkeep on a car that I liked. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, congratulations well, on thank you. this BMW, which yeah. I think is making you very happy. And it's very, it is very special and unique. And it's like now you have like two cars in your stable that are like, yeah, maybe not forever cars, but long term. I okay. ex- like very the, it, like exciting cars that interest you this whole year has been really stressful because i've basically been trying to reconfigure my car setup to be exactly what i want it to be and it's hard like you you can't just i mean you can i guess willy-nilly buy and sell cars until you have the right configuration but i mean it's a lot of work doing that except for the selling yeah except for the selling part so now i have four cars uh to um keep up with and hopefully the gti will sell quickly because i think people are interested in those it just wasn't for me um and uh yeah i so i love the 91 i'm I'm gonna keep that around for a while i don't i i don't have long commutes uh like i think that car is gonna stay uh under eighty thousand miles for at least a couple of years um and uh the so you mentioned something kind of funny in that it's like this now it's this kind of like rare special thing and like uh i wanted a daily driver that i didn't have to worry about but i still liked which is why the alternate car that i was looking at was at a land cruiser um because if that got beat up i wouldn't care as much because they made a million I still of those. think you're going to end up getting one of those. I might. I don't know. <laughs> I sent one around. Um, it was a 91 uh, 80 series, and it looks so cool. It was like gray with cloth seats and the. Um... Just You'd like to call it a no. Siri apparently okay. has things to say. Um, did we voice activate Siri? I have no idea. I thought that only worked when it was plugged in. I have no idea. Hmm. I don't do that because I feel a little weird about having Siri listen in on me all the time. Of course, I say that you have full like realization nine that I have nine us. Alexas like all around the house. Okay, yes. okay. Um, so you sent me a picture. Yeah. <laughs> yes. On on uh, Friday. Yeah. You took it. You, you said you were going to take it to a BMW service center that is local. Yeah. And the... have them do a little post. Post PI, yeah, uh, maybe, Post and pie. just just you know fix some things. You sent me a picture of an invoice, mm-hmm. and then we said we agreed we'd talk about it on the show. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so I have no idea. So, so okay. please tell me what I was looking at because uh, it looked like to me it looked like you had paid for a Prius worth of repairs. Kevin's referencing the price he paid for his daily driver Prius. I have a Prius that cost me $5,000. Here's the weird thing, is that everyone asks me how much I paid for it. Yeah. Like, no one really? no one asks me how much I paid for my other car, yeah. any other car, ever. Yeah. I People ask me, I guess because I boast about how cheap the Prius was. Yeah. Do you? Yes. Really? Yeah. I tune that out whenever you're talking really? about the Prius. You oh. have Prius pride. Which, I don't I'm glad know that you do. That. Uh... People are signing off right yep. now. Oh, you can wow. see the numbers. Oh, negative. Oh, God. That's weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so I brought it into um, a specialty indie shop. Um, very, Actually, really close by. And they're pretty well regarded. And the guys are uh, kind of cool were they BMW stoked to see nerds? the car? Yeah. I mean, it, I, it seems like they would be because they, they would get it. Because I used to live right by that place. You know, it's funny. And they like, had very cool taste in cars. In the couple of days that I had it, like I had like this older gentleman in a blue Camaro while getting out of his car, and I was getting into mine. Like remark, like, "Huh, BMW wagon? You never see those around." And then when I brought it to the shop, like the guy was like, the first thing he said to me was, "If you ever sell this." Let me know. 
Um, and but so wait, if I, if we could just backtrack to when you bought it, like you said something interesting the other day, like this was listed without the wagon tax. Like they it listed it pretty competitively, like yeah. it was just an E ninety, yeah, of that of two thousand eleven, right? Like it was just like a three twenty eight i sedan or something, yeah. uh, and. Like I sent you a listing today of yes. almost the exact same car with a few maybe additional options. Was it was it M Sport? It was not an M Sport, but it did have the Sport package. Okay. So and it was LCI. It was LCI. It was the same year. <laughs> uh, you're gonna hear LCI a lot. I apologize. LCI warnings yeah. to everybody. Did they make like how many years did they make that wagon? Uh, oh six to tw- uh, twenty twelve. Mm. Yeah. So in that uh, case, I do think the LCI taillights look a lot better. Oh yeah, on there they do. Like, and the headlights look a lot better too. Plus, it also doesn't have the weird mustache, um, the kidney bean mustache of the three LCI. I don't know if you're familiar, but no. Uh, the do you remember my? So I had an 06 uh, 330i previously, and the uh, the beans, like the chrome surround for the beans bisected the hood and so instead of making it oh like a, right right because it was the, it was that very bangle thing where they wanted yeah. it to look like the uh oh it was the like the z9 concept car yeah. which was which was led to the six series yeah. yes it was it was like a very modernist take on the kidneys where yeah. there was like a thick section and a thin section yeah except right? that yeah and they i feel like they could have done that without doing this kind of complicated thing where they have like this thin chrome like mustache basically applied to the hood mm-hmm. and instead maybe cut out the hood like they do on the lci version but anyway so like i grew to like ignore it like it, i did not right. i didn't really care for it no but, it was it was a more adventurous yeah it was, bangle led it was that on the, United, on the first and i remember that and i forgot about that even without bangle they continue to be experimental by merging the beans now well that's because there's no one there with any vision that's true uh and yeah, there's just, like, walking around that lot, as a side note, like, looking at all the new BMWs, it was depressing. Like, there... What did you find depressing about a $72,000 <laughs> M2 with a dealer-applied uh, wrap? I'm sorry, but that was not the worst one. I think it was the $88,000 um, 5, 5 GT. Series GT. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it wasn't even... It, I forget what spec it was, but it wasn't even the top of the line. What about one. the row of new 5 Series with... Or 7 Series with black kidneys. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, lots to see there. Lots mm-hmm. to unpack for sure. In fact, I, like, ironically, the most interesting thing there... I mean, M cars are always, like, fun and exciting, sure. But, like, I don't think I would ever pine for one like I would. Like, last one I'd ever want, it would be, a, like, an E90 M3. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it was the X2. Like, seeing those were kind of... Yeah, I think the X2, like, I, I've said this, I think the front fascia, like, yeah. I think the colors are cool. I think the front fascia so looks many cool colors. like, it kind of is drawn with a real purpose of like, mm-hmm. oh, they wanted this to look like this, like, concept car mm-hmm. face that they've shown a few times. And yeah. I, it didn't bother me that much. There was a an F30 3 Series yeah. uh, that was, I don't, just the interior was so overwrought. Like, we sat, there was it's that, just... and there was the Grand Coupe. Grant, is it the Grand Coupe? Four yeah. Series Grand Coupe, and I, I just like. There's just a lot of things happening on that interior. A lot of oh materials, a lot of texture. That's a lot what of, I, don't, I don't understand. It's kind of like it's like aluminum. It's everything. It's for, literally for like everything. Pleasure. Like, should we? Okay, we've drawn all these lines. Should we take out anything? No, just add more. Yeah, yeah, of more texture. It was more everything. Like, after being in the E90, and and also, um, I spent a lot of time in a early like twenty. 12 um f30 mm-hmm. 3 series yeah in colorado last month and like it's such a more inviting place to be mm-hmm. and not just like wood but like more inviting place to be with just the layout and the simplicity and the, and, and the materials versus some of these new ones where it's yeah. hyper aggressive lines and textures on every surface it's... and there was like this aluminum with a like pit, a, a not pitted, but like a it was like, like etched. It was like a tech, yeah. It was, it was like an etched pattern. It. it was very. It was like a lot, and I kind of get it. I get. I mean, like, I get it. I think it's terrible, but like, 
they're just rolling with the assumption that people are so ADD and that like normal car companies are making their interiors very nice. And honestly, like uh, non-premium interiors, I might think might be a little bit well nicer in terms yeah, of like Mazdas. Like Mazdas that, are like really that nice. Six yeah, or the new oh, CX-5. That, it's... that was so like. Every line made sense. The yeah. texture, like and the palette was and just... the materials. Like I, and also I've seen this in the Stelvio where it's like a black interior that looks yeah. very rich yeah. because usually a black interior is just kind of a sea of black, but right. they use so many materials and you've mm-hmm. got like this touches of Alcantara yeah. and touches of piano and, black, they call it, but it's all yeah. like perfectly and, done. You know, I mean, sure. The BMW interior might be higher grade, but like it's just so much like it almost yeah. looks tacky it makes me think I, and i'm not and i don't know if i would be in the place shopping for an f30 but it, it makes you think like you know you you found this car and there was probably three interiors available or two you know two or three interiors like that were on available on this on this three series yeah roughly i'm yeah. generalizing but and whereas you if get you were to buy a pre-owned 2016 bmw it's like Oh, it's the perfect series, the perfect M Sport package, but it's got the like awful interior. Yeah, or one, it's got, like, of the, the, one of the seven awful interior options. Polka dot they're, they're, like yeah, fabric. There's, there's so much variation, uh, and I, you know, that's the thing. It's like when you spec a new BMW, if you order it from the factory, you can you basically can have anything you want. Like mm-hmm. you can spec it in any which combination, and there is no style police to stop you from making really bad decisions. Um, and you could even say there's no style police stopping any of them from. No, the yeah, that way. is true. That is true, and that I do like that about the E90 is that it's kind of especially without iDrive. Um, it's a really kind of clean, elegant, like very it, Teutonic is the only way I can really describe it. It's just very like it looks like a German car on and the this inside. Fantastic car. Yes. Is parked right on the street right it's now. It's parked on the street, yeah. It's going to be my street park car. Um, so I won't... It's fine. Like, yeah, I'm going to use it. I'm, I'm going to use fine. it like... It's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it as it was meant to be used. I might even go camping. I won't. Uh, I'm going to move furniture. <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. Um, but no, I'm going to treat it fine. I mean, I treat all my cars the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so. extremely preciously. Ugh, it's so terrible. Can I talk about a car that's not precious? Yeah. Okay, we're going to go back to the Prius. Go I, had to get, I had to replace... <sighs> I love I that we're talking about this right I don't now. even want to go into... It's too late. You've kind of... That ball's rolling down the hill. You better go after okay, it. Okay, so last month, one of my headlights went out. HID. I bought a bulb to replace it. I was unable to take out, you can't remove the headlight without removing the bumper and you can't actually access the back of the headlight until, anyway, I I removed the old bulb. I could not get the new bulb in. It was, I was blind. My hand got all cut up from, from being in this cramped compartment. I couldn't see anything. I had watched five terrible YouTube videos about Mm -hmm. how to do it and Mm -hmm. I could visualize how to do it, but I couldn't see anything. Mm -hmm. So today, anyway, I paid, uh, too much money, uh, too much money to replace yeah. the the headlight bulb last month, and then t- uh, in the past week, the other headlight yep. went out. Yep. And so I took the I actually did it properly. I took the bumper off and removed the headlight and removed it. And I was like, oh, I see the clip now. And I re- I replaced the headlight with mm-hmm. that same bulb I had from before. Yeah. And it didn't work. And I was kind of mad so i took it back but the nice thing about a car that you don't care about and that you can just you can just get it repaired like a normal person you could just (laughs) drop it off at firestone and say here fix these three things and it's still going to cost me less than an oil change on my 911 yeah and uh i don't have and they're extremely fast last time i dropped it off at like nine and they called me at 11 30 yeah oh you want to pick up your car i was like uh yeah is that a jab at the fact that you have to wait almost weeks in between to receive your night it's not back. it's not that i it's not that i wait weeks it's that there it's always ready they call me it's in the worst location they call me on friday at five o'clock yep. and they say all right you're ready to go <laughs> come pick it up or, or four o'clock or three yeah. o'clock or any time where it's like it's just it's horrible to get there and to get back um uh, especially in the summer but yeah. anyway so uh the to update you i dropped it off mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i said could you Look at this headlight. The driver's side now. Passenger mm-hmm. side was fixed last month. Um, and when I say great expense, it was like $350 because of, I guess, the labor. Yeah. And anyway, 
I said, please uh, so, look at the Freon. So they're yeah. going to do, they're doing a test yeah. on the Freon and to see where so, it's leaking. They said there's no Freon. Did that help the light bulb um, function normally? Well, what, the Freons? Yes. No, they're doing that, but they also said mm -hmm. they got in... So I successfully replaced the bulb, yeah. but I wasn't going to say I replaced the bulb because they're going to... I don't know. Plus, who wants to say that I, they I fixed spent it it's a still collective broken. $700 on light bulbs for a Prius? I, who's going to say... I, so I, I don't want to say I fixed it, but it's not working, but it's not the thing I did, because mm -hmm. they're not going to believe me, and I wouldn't either, frankly. Yeah, no. Especially if you saw how I type. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I replaced, so, so I dropped off. I was like, this driver's side headlight's not working. And they called me mm -hmm. before I came over here and they said, we, we, we put, you know, we replaced the bulb. It didn't work. We put the bulb on the, on the passenger side just to test it. It worked. It is something else. It's probably the ballast. It might be something else. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever yeah. it is, it's probably not going to be that expensive. Yeah. And, They'll, they'll fix the AC and it'll be extremely cold. Yeah. And oh, so you didn't get it back? No, I didn't get it back. This is an overnighter. I dropped wow. it off at four o'clock. Okay. Yeah. So true. I was, I was surprised they even called me at seven. They're like, yeah. uh, Do you want to just keep it here tomorrow till tomorrow? I was like, uh, Yeah. Usually when I drop off the nine eleven at four o'clock, I don't yeah. expect to get it that week. So yeah. Nope. It was uh, anyway. We spent way too much time talking about yeah the Prius. If only someone had warned you. You did warn me about the HIDs, <laughs> but I think I think that the bulbs would be just as much labor with any bulb. Probably. I owned a Prius a very long time ago. And it's not as long as you say. It's pretty long. Huh. At least 20 or 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I had HIDs too. If Toyota went through, I think they went through a lawsuit where they, I got reimbursed like $700 so at the time. What? Because HIDs weren't as common, and I mean, this was like, uh, oh, I think this was 08. This was not 08. It was 08. You had a brand new one? No. Oh, I bought like a two-year-old one. So it was an 06, but I bought it in 08. Mm. Yeah. But that same year, like, as soon as I read it, almost like when you buy a 996 and you don't know about IMS... And then you read the forums because now you're interested in the car and you learn that you're just driving this grenade. Um, it's the same way with the Prius. Like I was like, oh, I thought the HIDs would be a good thing to have. And like it turns out like they burn out like all the time despite the whole point of xenons is they last longer than yeah. hal halogen bulbs. But they don't and they were really expensive then. Like it really did – like the dealer covered one under warranty and it cost them 700 and some odd dollars and – then the other one went out shortly after, oh. and it cost. I oh, paid I for that like one. Seven hundred for both, which is what it's going to end no. up costing me. Oh no! And then like I actually like after this lawsuit happened, uh, they reimbursed either materials or, or labor. I don't remember what it was, but I got like three hundred and fifty dollars back um, from that. Uh, anyways, really enough now about Prius. Wait, yeah. So you 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 didn't finish telling me about that invoice. Or those repairs yeah. on your... Yeah, anymore. we should dial that one back. Uh, <clears throat> so I took it in for a post-purchase inspection, and I also got the um, clutch delay valve removed as well. For uh, And that's what you should... You, on every single non-M BMW, because I think the M1s don't come with them. Um, Doesn't your Cayman have that too? It does. And it that one's electronic, um, oddly enough. It's a switch. And I disabled it once, and it doesn't stick. I can permanently disable it but uh <clears throat> at this point i don't think i'm going to do it um so yeah i brought it in to get it inspected and they get the cdv removed uh and you know i know that these guys were notor notoriously thorough like they will tell you anything and everything that not only is wrong with your car but could go wrong with your car soon and so it's your choice to do things preventatively if you would like and uh, I showed up and they presented me with a like laundry list of items. I mean, it, nothing surprising. I mean, uh, you know, replace uh, preventative, preventatively replace like the water pump if you want to. There's one strut that is lightly leaking. Um, so uh, I'm, anyway, <clears throat> it's stuff like that. Um, oops, sorry. Hang on. Take a sip of water. I'm like 
drive. <laughs> well, you sent me the picture, and it was large. It was fifty five hundred dollars. Yeah, is it, what they said. It's fifty five hundred dollars. I also showed you a credit card receipt. Oh, so did you pay it? So did you have it done? What happened was no. I would be surprised. First of all, I dropped it off for an afternoon. Well, I knew it was very surprising at the time wise, but yeah. also I was like, wow. I if <laughs> so, what happened was yeah. So they came up with a laundry list of fifty five hundred dollars worth of things that I could do to the car, uh, and um, honestly, that was probably the cost of ownership of my E ninety before, like the the four years that I owned it. That's probably what it. Uh, ended up spending um, total and so anyways we're just having like this chat because like I said like you know they're a bunch of like BMW nerds so we were it wasn't even just kind of like hammed up conversation uh, uh, it was like a nice conversation and I guess he was distracted but he like rung up the wrong invoice because uh, oh. instead of the invoice for the CDV and the inspection he uh, rung up the $5,500 invoice um, and like promptly noticed it, which is why I have a receipt for that. Um, oh, wow. But I guess I could have just told him to, uh, don't worry about it. Just let's go ahead and do everything. But that's crazy. Like, How much of it are you going to do? I'm sure there's things you're going to do. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take care of some things immediately. I think I'm going to do some uh, preventative maintenance, um, preventively replace the water pump um, and upgrade bits of uh, the uh, cooling system and... Um, probably take care of the struts, uh, and then just take care of everything else, like kind of as it comes, because nothing else was really all that catastrophic. It was just small things, but a lot of little small things. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, so it is possible to off the bat spend that much money should you ever want it. And I'm all about preventive maintenance, but that's, that would be crazy to mm -hmm. off the bat spend that much on a perfectly reliable. Otherwise, the car is tight as a drum. It you, seemed like it from the test drive. Yeah, and normally I would get a pre-purchase inspection but honestly like this is one of those things where i felt like the car would have sold or yeah. something had i like taken the time it was also really far away um so I would it have was to... 30 minutes away that's really far <laughs> who has the time <laughs> um so anyways yeah uh so i sent you a listing today for that same model we didn't really follow through with that but uh because I was bored. Oh my god, you're not bored. You're enthralled. He, Kevin was against me buying this car. I was not. I was not supportive. this specific car, but like before, I was like, I told him that I wanted to replace the GTI with a different daily driver that I know that I would have liked, and I said I was going to buy the same car that I had, but a wagon version. Uh, I guess that's not true. I also was looking at E90 330Is as well, and three uh, E46 330Is ZHPs. Yeah, he hates it. He, you don't you don't know you don't understand it's just it's so boring especially no. if you already had one i didn't have the 330i zhp yeah but i think it's it's just a, it's a i liked it so much i wanted so it back boring. again uh it's no boring. it's not it's it's for a city car to drive around in it's just enough of everything uh but anyways you could get a regular e46 that's not as ugly what as zhp yeah zhp is i like ugly. the way it looks oh. i like the way it looks um, but Those besides the point, sense. okay. Besides the point, uh, yeah. So E ninety one, goodbye. I like it. Good. Yeah. Good. So that other one, but so we were talking about the wagon tax on that. Yeah, they, for whatever reason. So my biggest regret when I didn't buy that one in twenty twelve, it was a twenty eleven at the time, as well. Uh, was that I think they were asking twenty nine. So um. I was fine with that, and when I didn't buy it, uh, I was still looking out for them, uh, and the prices never went down. Like, for three or four years, it like, if you wanted a rear-wheel drive manual E91, it was always about $30,000, not even from EAG. Uh, and so, if, so I guess yours being a 2011, that's, that's like the last model year. 2012 is there's there's an overlap okay so the e91 the wagon body uh oh, overlapped okay. with the f30 okay. yeah uh so yeah and so i sent you a listening day same specs as my car mileage and everything and they were asking for thirty two thousand dollars for it which is ridiculous um uh, but who knows maybe yeah. someone will buy it oh so i had um 
A couple more things to say about the E34, which we've mentioned yes. in 100% of our episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, but by popular demand, we had not talked about the LCI, the wider grill treatment on the E34. Um, and I also had a correction because I said that the 530, 535, mm -hmm. 540, mm -hmm. and M5 mm -hmm. and 525 were all sold concurrently in the U.S., and I was wrong. The 535 was earlier. Okay. It was only sold until 92, and it was replaced in 92 by the 530, which was okay. the small V8. Yeah. So the 530 came in at the same, roughly the same time as the 540, and they were the first V8s yeah. made in like 50 years yeah. um, by BMW. And, and there was a uh, recent Jalopnik post. About there it, was. Where they yeah. quoted you actually, but they did quote me. Not in yeah. the context because we've talked about the 530i. Yeah. Quite frequently. Yeah. Yeah. Just they, such a they weird did thing quote to have. me. Well, they quoted me because I was making fun of how BMW numbers for things used to mean things that were accurate, like what do they displacements mean? and stuff. But that's besides this point, mm -hmm. not besides the point at all, because it's very important. But the um, so the wider grill treatment yes. was it was supposed to be initially it was the V8 models. Mm hmm. And, oh really? And, yeah, and then um, how did they you all find this it. out? That's not important. Mm -hmm. My sources, which is a publicly edited website by mm -hmm. everyone and the people, I'll um, have to Google it. Yeah, I'll have to Yahoo it. <laughs> I'll have to Bing it. Um, but it was the V8 models mm -hmm. and the wider grill, and then it became just a facelift. I had no idea. Yeah. Okay. So I, and, and it's also did you know it's a different hood? No. Yeah, it's a different hood. So people that like want to upgrade, it's mm -hmm. quite a pricey upgrade. My so you God. have to change the hood and everything. But what do you, I think, I, it, basically the, the wider grills was almost like introducing people to the E39 look aesthetic early. Yeah, I actually, I remember um, when I was very interested in E34s, um, like going back and forth and whether I liked the kind of very simplistic classic looking face of the pre-facelift or i refuse to use lci incorrectly by the way this is correct no this is literally it correct was, this is pre lci no <laughs> we're gonna say lci because we mean for facelift. everything facelift yeah um but and i remember thinking like the that the facelift looked good um what does but, that mean it got botox or something yeah well it was very thick two oh. c's Oh, you mean LCI? Beans. Um, yes, the LCI. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Like I actually kind of still go back and forth. I, they both look really good to me. One just looks a little bit more like classic BMW, and the other, and it's so subtle. It's funny yeah. how big of a difference it makes. But yeah. Uh, and then yeah, like the facelift uh, actually looks kind of modern. Like it, or not modern, but it um, mm -hmm. it looks like a newer, genuinely a newer uh, yeah. design. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I had no idea that there, that it was such a, that they were always available, I guess. Is that what you're saying? No. Well, the, the V8 models were not introduced till 92. Okay. Or maybe for the 93 model year, uh, the V8, the 530 and the 540 came in Yeah. and they had the wider grills. And then in 94, the wide grills were just on everything. Okay. So it's very yeah. odd. I like the wide grills. That's who I grew up with. Mm -hmm. um, and I always like the more extreme, like wider. I, I just, I think it's cooler as it gets wider. I still, I you know, I love like the i8 or the Z8, like how that treatment Wider is, is better. Yeah. I believe a wise philosopher. Pontiac? Yes. Yeah. Said that. <laughs> Didn't, they had like a weird commercial with like, uh, like a Hawaiian saying, they did, and it was for the Pontiac Grand Prix yeah. Wide Track, which was not a model. I think it was just the Grand Prix, but it seemed like, even to me as a young car enthusiast, yeah. it seemed like the Wide Track was a special model. And also, I thought so too. They, they stretched the screen. Oh my god! I remember and that. I was like, which is the which is one hundred percent? Is it? Before they stretch or after they stretch? <laughs> like, is this false advertising? It was like a comical stretch. It was like. They stretched it oh, to, yeah. like, the It, it was literally a comical stretch. Yeah, yeah. With a sound effect. Yep. <laughs> we have to find that commercial. Yeah. Um, but, yes, wider is better. Well, speaking of old car uh -huh. materials, yes. 
Would you like to look at our periodicals? Okay. Okay. Let's so this is our it. regular segment that we've done twice. I'm running out of periodicals here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what Kevin's brought, and he doesn't know what I've brought. We're taping at my house, so um, it was very easy for me to go rummaging for something when I completely forgot to look yeah. for something earlier. Yeah. Um, we we just we like the old car brochures and yeah. magazines and things. Last time we talked about a mag, I talked about a magazine, and it was a little harder because the theme is kind of all over the place. And um, anyway, I. Picked up a couple things on eBay recently. I have my own collection, but my own home office is kind of in a disarray right now. So I've just been acquiring new things mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. cope. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I told Chris that this he would be very surprised by what I brought. I can't wait. Yes. I'm well, on pins and needles. Yes. This is, <clears throat> which me? I think is incorrect, but. Yeah. Uh, what? What's in No. Is it? This is a way on, No. Do you wait on pins and needles? Is that what it is? What is it? Yeah. I do really? that all the time. On pins and needles? Yes. Okay. Oh my God. I can't believe that's what you brought. <laughs> For many reasons, but just hang on. Okay. So okay. Kevin is like teasing the brochure from underneath the table still. Yeah. This is the, this is the, is this just their car? Was this just the car? Yeah, I mean... This is a Volvo 1980 brochure, and the reason that I acquired this uh, and brought it yes. is because it has a whole... Only one spread, just but one spread about the Bertone Coupe, Ooh, which yeah. I find such a fascinating thing. Look at... If you want to talk about rouged leather, Ooh, look oh. at that. That is rouged. You sit, you sit in those seats and you never get out. Yeah. I, no. I'm it, looking at it upside down, and this is uh, it, backwards. This was the... Like, Burnt roast beef or yeah. uh, an old man. This was the 262C Bertone Coupe. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, was, that, was it 262C? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. Um, I find these so fascinating. It really was like the Camry Coupe of its day, except it looked completely different from the other models. Yeah. It was so bizarre. It's so bizarre. Yeah. I saw a couple of these on Craigslist and I was like, this is the weirdest car. I How did I know, know, any, know anything about this? I believe that they're still around because I do, I see them every once in a while. Uh, I love how like romanticized like this copy is too. Yeah. Like, I wish this, I wish this was like a brochure only about the, the Bertone Coupe. Yeah. But. Look at this, like, because they're advertising in the same, uh, uh, ad, I guess, basically, or brochure. With the like and like the rouge leather, they, this was like obviously for like the American market. I mean, it looks like a Cutlass Sierra. It does. Um, it does. And with the, it didn't do a Landau. They were too good for that. Uh, but I think they, it, it depends on the year. I thought. They, I, I thought don't they know, did a but they they made it look like one anyways. Mm-hmm. Like with this like chrome trim cutting the uh, C pillar. Um, oh yeah, for a second I thought it was pillarless. You know, B. Anyways, but yeah, look at that sofa of the back seat. That's crazy. And then I like that uh, they ran out of things to talk about because this is basically the same car that they had then been making for like 10 years probably, um, that they're advertising the power antenna and the cruise control uh, as... I bet those still work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I like that this is probably like the worst feature, the power antenna, um, power retractable antenna. So you're probably excited about the rest of this I am. I actually well. want to look at the rest of this, which... Look at that. Yeah. Action shot of I mean, two. This looks I have car books from this era and this looks exactly like books. Like the way the copy is. Although the headlines the headlines are actually like pretty bold for the time. Yeah. I mean I literally bold, but they're Oh wow, look at this. So that's so funny that on the cover this I'm just turned to the cover, but they have the they have like three different generations of headlights. They have the single Mm-hmm. rounds and then they have the double rounds and then they have like the u.s market sealed uh square head i've beam. seen like this like or headlights headlights on like the bertoni coupe and that's pretty cool yeah and so that's a flat hood yeah um so uh like i used i still am super into 240s and i would love to get a 240 wagon um and i had a cousin I have a cousin in portland who used to restore these um oh, wow which is the place like where you would hear something like that. Um, but yeah, oh man, this 242 looks so good with that flat hood and the round lights. 
Ooh, this is really cool. <laughs> um, but, oh, so, yeah, this would be pre-Turbo, so. Yeah, this was 1980. Yeah. Uh, well, that's cool. Well, then I have something for you. What I, do you have? I cannot believe that this is what you Isn't this surprising? Oh, look at that. Look how neatly stowed that luggage is. Oh, and that stereo. Yeah, everything about this is really cool. Um, yeah. Okay, so. We'll post ready? pictures of this on our Instagram. Yes. Yes, we will. Uh, as will we also post what I have brought, which I'm going to hand it to you like this so that... Kevin is eyes closed. What? This is... Oh, holy shit. Yeah. I did not know that Kevin was going to bring a Volvo 240 uh, brochure. Kevin, this what have is, I brought you? This is not a brochure. <laughs> this was this was un, uncoordinated, as most of this uh, set program is. This... Is this was a hot rides type of brochure, <laughs> like a not brochure, but a, a editorialized yep. spec sheet, yep. part of a binder system. Yep, which I had similar things of these. Yeah, and this is a Volvo 240 GLT Turbo. <laughs> yeah, and this is about a wagon with yeah. a top. This excellent power hot hauler. Has a top speed of a hundred and seven. Yeah, aerodynamically Not 70, seven miles per aerodynamically hour. limited. <laughs> this was nineteen eighty one to nineteen eighty six. Yeah, Ooh, what is the look at that? Yeah, this one looks really cool because the Eurospec like it's featured. Yeah, um, so it has like the good headlights. It has uh, black black grill black grill like actually, half the cars of that bmw dealer yeah black yeah <laughs> it actually looks good here um and um what is the horsepower rating on that i actually don't recall 127 bh wow wow with a torque figure of 150 at a mere 3750 rpm kevin what do you think that the bertone coupe was rated at the V6 that was offered. Oh, the V6? Yeah. I'm going to say 142. Okay. You'll be glad to know that that big boy sitting in there uh, produces 130 horsepower. I was very close. This yeah. was 1980. Yeah. I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't looked at this brochure that much, but yeah. I'm excited about it. Yeah. This is not even a brochure. It's basically a brochure. It's, it's a periodical. Oh, boy. Well... That's what I was promised, periodicals. Oh, the nose to nose. It shows the rivals. Yeah. We've got Oh yeah. We've got coming in at a top speed. I'm gonna rate by top speed, because back in 1980, that's all that mattered. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um coming in at 137 miles an hour. We've got the Ford Thunderbird Turbo mm -hmm, Coupe. Mm-hmm. 131 miles an hour, the Saab 900 Turbo. There's a convertible picture, I'm not sure why. And this Volvo that this spec sheet is about is 107 miles per hour. Yeah. This is not an official document. This is some kind of... I don't even remember where I got this. I Okay, so I have a little story about this. I, I had the exact same thing. It was like it was called like this hot car system and they yeah. send you they sent you ones. Yeah. They sent you like inserts yeah. and you put them in this binder or whatever and like they sent it to me somehow maybe because they saw my like road and track subscription. This is all when I was a teenager like yeah. 13 or 14. Yeah. And we were like, oh, this is cool. Like they sent me something. I don't know if I filled something out but like I got like a collection notice because I never paid any money. Oh, and really? And my mom was like, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Did she? No. Oh. She was like, oh, well, they can keep sending stuff, but, you know, you didn't ask for anything. Or, Whoa. It was really weird. That is I don't really, really know weird. what happened. That's super weird. There's a lot of weird things. Yeah. Because like we, this looks like it's a tear sheet, but it looks like the, like the final page it, of uh, a car and driver or a motor trend. But it went into a binder back filled then. with other ones of these. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I and actually, 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 when you look for this. old coverstures on eBay, you find these yeah. everywhere. Wow. They, the, that is a really weird rival cars setup. Uh, well, there's only like nine cars on sale at the time, yep. so you had to pick the closest one, and that Saab was probably close-ish. Uh, well, you're comparing like a Volvo 
245 turbo mm -hmm. so this like whole thing the whole premise already starts out slightly uh not incorrect. what does glt stand for uh i never knew that they were um well glt was just kind of like a trim level glt i think was the uh top of the line like the um, glc good little car yep okay. yeah something like that um because there was the gl and the 740 had a gle and then glt uh maybe i don't know like it's been a while since i've had my nose in this stuff but um yeah oh look they have like the 850 this is not vintage at all there's a picture of the 850 uh turbo on here which actually i really like too um i used to have brochures for all this stuff but no more although we'll, we'll reacquire these things yeah we'll reacquire these most of these can be had more for stuff more two dollars plus shipping on ebay yeah i know uh yeah <laughs> um anyways I think it's about that time. Oh, is it? Oh, actually, I had one more oh. segment. Oh, my. Um, there was... Okay, so there was a... Uh, there was a 1982 911 SC on Bring a Trailer. Mm -hmm. It was the chiffon white one. Mm -hmm. And there was an interesting discussion. The one that sold for like 52? Uh, no, this is the one that was listed. It has, I don't think it's sold yet. Okay. Did it sell? It's not the one from six months ago. This was like today. Oh, okay. Then I have not seen it yet. Oh, um... There's a chiffon white 911 SC, and it had sugar scoops, which I just wanted to say, sugar scoops really suck. Yeah. And they should be changed on anything. And I almost feel bad for, like, if you have, like, uh, I'm not going to pity someone that has a $120,000 930 turbo, but if you have a 911 that's like a 77 and you, like, can't change the scoops because it would ruin the correctness like oh god that, you know like that seems, i mean like that, that does seem slightly that would be kind of annoying but but yeah. um sugar scoops are bad anyway but i say this as someone who doesn't have sugar scoops but 85 mile an hour speedometers are good there's actually a good discussion about them mm -hmm. yeah because um i don't know i'm, I'm kind of iffy about changing a speedometer on a car my 911 has an 85 mile an hour speedometer so of course i think they're fine i like the period correctness so i don't need to Plus i don't need to change it and i don't want to tamper. like i don't want to tamper i don't want to tamper with a speedometer yeah like, or an odometer yeah the odometer, odometer is in the, the speedometer, speedometer yeah. so i don't want to tamper with that i don't want to have someone else tamper with it and then so there was just like an interesting back and forth in the comments and yeah. i whenever these did you comment? Oh, Porsche, no, I didn't. Because uh, I have nothing to add. Yeah. I have nothing to add. I don't, no one cares what I think. No. Except for all of you. You don't have like listeners. some like, yeah, indeed. But the, like, I just like kind of absorbing with people who live through the time because it's like one person's like, I'm immediately suspect of any 80 to 82 car that has 150 miles an hour speedometer. Yeah. And then, you know, because of the odometer tampering and I need like documentation that it was done yeah. right with, you know, matched whatever. And then, and then there's someone else that's like, oh yeah, like I bought one of these cars in 81 and like every, what everyone did is like, you would change it right after you bought it. Like you would, you would have it changed yeah. right after you bought it. Like it's just everyone, everyone, not everyone, that? but lots of people, people yeah. in the circles. I'm sure there's lots of portions. I, I, I imagine the enthusiasts, like the people that go to stupid Porsche mm -hmm. things like you and I do yep. would be the people that would change it right after you buy it. I guess it. so, yeah. Um, uh, and I just love seeing like so clear cut, like yeah. two different sides where I'm like, oh, I could see that. Oh, yeah, I can also see that. I, I mean, personally, I don't really want to change it. It doesn't matter. I don't need to be going more than 85 miles an hour. And if I do, I can in use... In a car with no airbags. I can um, use ways to see how fast I'm going. Yeah, like I have to do in the Celsius because I still don't have the kilometers and miles conversion in my head yet um you'll get there yeah but also like the so because it's in celsius celsius it's, it's in celsius uh which is a made-up unit sponsored by kellogg's they um, are a sponsor yeah they are a sponsor Eat those cornflakes yeah um but i do like and to that point though like you probably feel because at least you get to see the needle sweep like, uh, in yes. like, cause you know, like in like the Cayman, like one, I'd never used the analog gauge anyways. I just used the digital readout. But if you were to try to gauge your speed, like 60 is maybe a 10th of the sweep. Uh -huh. So it's just, it's so silly. And then like, so in the Celsius, uh, it's, it's speed governed, um, 
per Japan's roads. So I think it one twelve. Yeah, something like that. I don't know, uh, but no, it's, it is. I, I I had a friend in in high school. We were oh, driving. Okay, in, yeah. We were driving in his Honda Prelude, yeah. which he he had a swapped H twenty two A engine, which is the VTEC mm-hmm. t- uh, two point two yeah. SI. No, it's not the SI. It's, it's I think he had the SI, which was non VTEC. Yeah. Anyway, he had the the VTEC Prelude motor, which okay. was two hundred horsepower. Yeah, and w- it was from Japan. The engine, and yeah. we were doing stupid things on the highway yep. and he hit basically a wall yeah. of speed, you know, where it's just at 112, it just yeah. comes to a complete halt. Well, yeah, that's it. that's pretty much it. Like it has like basically the equivalent of like 112-ish and change mm-hmm. uh, speedometer. So it's great because uh, it, well, I mean, I guess it's great. I mean, this is like a wafty car, so it doesn't really matter how fast you're going, but uh, on the highway, like you're at like three quarter dial. And... Is there is there a gear on? And you can answer this for I guess the GTI or the Cayman or the BMW. Yeah. Is there is there a gear where the tack and the speedometer are perfectly proportionally equal? I just what remember, do you mean, in, like aesthetically, like no, no, no. Like I think, uh, I think in my in my Probe GT and maybe my. 350z i mm-hmm. can't remember i think fourth gear it was like it was oh like they were exactly in sync like the exact same position on the clock like oh. it was like a, it was like a one-to-one ratio on the tack for fourth gear i honestly have never paid attention to yeah. that okay well yeah. maybe now you have something to look for. now i have to try it out on all uh yeah three of the manual cars at least mm-hmm. um but yes no i have never I I that would never be the case in the Cayman. Oh, I guess not. Yeah, it's got like a two hundred and forty mile an hour. Yeah, speedometer. something ridiculous like that. Um, so, but I'll try it out and maybe sixth is proportional. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, I like I like seeing sweep. I don't like the little ambitious like uh, speed I like gauges. Like I don't know. Like it, it seems like a waste. Um, but anyways, I wonder what the gauge goes up to in this Volvo. Probably twenty five. Please talk while I flip through the pages. <laughs> I look at you flipping as well because the the it's mesmerizing the photography. Oh, it's an eighty five mile speedometer because this is a nineteen eighty. Oh yeah, same year as your it's, car. It's a tiny picture. I'm like squinting, and then yeah. I see eighty five, and I'm oh, like, oh my gosh. god. Shit. Uh, yes, it's it's an eighty five. To be fair, that Whoa. is probably what the engine is like. Do you like, see this photo anyway. with the the like action motion on the rear wiper? Wow. It's like it's like these perfectly placid, nice photos. I know. And then the wiper has this motion blur, like they yeah. shot it long exposure. Amazing. Um, I love that it. it has the Volvo font. It's this like is every the, page is like, like an the ad. worst tack I've ever seen in my life. Wow! Look at that. What is that? Fifty five hundred. Do you see this? Oh, it's a GT. Yeah, that's um, the 242 GT. So it has the race seats and the race wheel. Um, the race cousin, seats are very racy. Yeah, they're very racy. Maybe I can get some of these rouge seats to put in the Prius. <laughs> I think you should. I love the word rouge in that I hate it. Like, I hate seeing, <laughs> you know, like, because looking at older cars all the time, uh, you get to see, like, the 996 has uh supple leather seats that you can get oh 997 does too but it's worse than the 996 they all look so bad because it's like sitting on a freshly ironed pleated piece of clothing you immediately wrinkle it uh and it looks really bad basically from day one uh and i don't i don't know if anyone still actually likes rouged leather uh but it looks quite bad Mm. yeah curtains oh no i was gonna say Please that, don't. Let's yeah, just. I want. So I think it's time to go. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I think we should tell everyone to uh, check out our Instagram at new for ninety six. Uh, was Excuse I supposed me. to say that in unison with you? Uh, I was waiting new for, for it. New for ninety six. I was waiting for it. I yeah. thought you were going to do it there. Okay. So, um, but also email us 
Uh, if you have questions or comments or complaints or corrections, uh, no, or complaints, that you're going to fill the inbox with corrections. I am willing to. I will read oh, each no. and every third or fourth correction. <laughs> uh, and that email address is nf nine six podcast at gmail dot com. Was I supposed to be saying that in unison? I you? was waiting for you okay. to, yeah. So chime in any time now. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, com. that wraps it up. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Yeah. Goodbye. Talk to you next time. Bye.